Hello, welcome. This is Genshin1913, and we're starting a brand new Let's Play. By Sierra. Yes, this game is Gabriel Knight, Sins of the Father. This game is really good. It takes place in 1994. It's a Classic point and click adventure. So let's watch the intro and start the game. So yeah, this is Gabriel Knight, Sins of the Father. And as you can see, this is the intro, I guess. Um, yeah. The game was created by Jane Jensen, who uh, originally, um, she originally did, uh, she helped do King's Quest. She was uh, the writer of King's Quest VI. Really good stuff. But yeah, this game's really good. And uh, I remember playing it a lot when I was a kid. It was an awesome game. And yeah, I'm going to show it off because it's, uh, it's one of my childhood favorite games of all time. Now this game did have a uh, remake just recently within like the past year or two. I do plan on playing that as well um, later on. So here we go. We start in the game on day one. We play as Gabriel Knight. I dreamt of blood upon the shore, the eyes that spoke of sin. The lake was smooth and deep and black, as was her scented skin. So yeah, we play as Gabriel Knight. He is a writer and the owner of St. George Bookstore in in uh, New Orleans. Mm-hmm. I bet. Just a minute. It lives, I see. Do you want to speak with Lolita? I'm sorry, but Gabriel is allowed. Oh, I mean, he's out. Yeah, if he ever comes back, I'll tell him. You know, you could do better. I know I don't know you, but you could do better. Good morning. The phone's been ringing off the hook all morning. Let me know when you want your messages. Yeah. Gee, 
You're lively. Did you have another nightmare last night? Sort of. Mm-hmm. I told you it's that voodoo book you're researching. That stuff can seriously screw up karma. I'm sure that's it. Maybe I should write a horror novel on passive resistance instead. <sighs> so don't sleep. It's your body. Anyway, your handheld tape recorder came today. Really? Great. I can't wait to see what human rights you violate with this one. <laughs> I can't wait to violate them. For example, if you would just let me... And I located some local voodoo references for you. Dixieland Drugstore and the Historical Museum of Voodoo. Both are right here in French Quarter. How would I ever manage without you? You? Give me a break. The devil himself couldn't change you. Well, if the devil had great legs, perhaps like yours. And a riveting personality, I'm sure. Well, if you need any more research done, just ask. It's not as though we're swamped with customers. All right, so welcome to the uh, Gabriel Knight. So what we have up here is the menu. You have your walk, your look, your, to your question, your talk, or interact or whatever. You have your take. You have your open your door. You have your activate. You, you uh, basically use the items and then the move, I believe that's move. Gabriel is carrying nothing. Yeah, right now Gabriel's carrying nothing. You can look at all these cassette tapes and listen back to the interviews that you did. Here's the points that you do. Help icon. And I am going to turn the narrator, I'm going to turn text on. And actually, I'm going to lower the sound just a smidge. Just a little bit. And the speed up just a bit. And now, just like any other other games, I'm gonna say Game of Night One. All right, one. Gotta use it here. All right, so let us start by interacting with. And yeah, you can right-click to cycle through. That doesn't work. That. All right, so then take it. Let's read the news. Times pickle hue, dated June 18, 1993. The front page has an article about the voodoo murders. The article says that the victims are all identified as members of the underworld. The general public of New Orleans is in no danger. Police claim the so-called voodoo trappings found at the crime scenes are fake, a scare tactic and that the murders are not associated with any genuine practitioners. Gabriel also scans the Aquarius horoscope for the day. Potential storms ahead. Proceed with caution and do not get involved with anything new at this time. Mm -hmm. Right. So yeah, everybody's dialogue will be narrated by a different color. And, uh, yeah, so, um, this place takes place, obviously, in New Orleans, and it's good stuff. Let's grab this magnifying glass. Mind if I borrow the magnifying glass? No, Sherlock. Just bring it back when we get the next estate shipment. No problem. Let's take some tweet. And, yeah, whenever you hear that noise, that means you're getting some points. So let's take some tweezers. I'm going to take the tweezers for a bit. Good. You're beginning to look a little scruffy. Just trying to make you feel at home. Let's operate this. Wishful thinking. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, th these guys are not... It's certainly light enough. But rather useless, as Gabriel well knows. Yeah, okay. Let's open it up. Gabriel opens the cash register to examine the tape. Or, in the case of St. George's books, the mistake. Alright, so here we're gonna take, uh... We're gonna take, um... I trust you can live without this old gift certificate. Gift certificate? Knock yourself out. Alright, so... Now we can, uh... We can come... Let's go in here. This is Gabriel's room. Now, if we look over here... The medicine cabinet contains a few old prescriptions, personal hygiene stuff, and lots of hair products, including 
some hair gel. Yeah, let's take some hair gel. You never know when you're gonna need it. I'll take this hair gel. You never know when you'll need a touch up. I just said it. Gabriel might as well leave that. Yeah, all right. Anything in the Gabriel, fridge? shut the refrigerator, please. I could smell it from here. Huh. Must not Women. Be, must not be working. All right, so let's go in here. Yeah, it's gonna take me a mo. Uh, it's gonna take me a bit Gabriel. to uh, cycle through certain things. All right, so here we are. Let's talk to Gracie. So now if you use this. You can just have chat casual. So what's new, Grace? You can have casual chat. Your use of mathematics, for one thing. These books are unbelievable. What can I say? I refuse to be bound by rules. The strap marks on your bedpost speak otherwise. Ooh. Anyways, let's look at this. Three snakes in a skull. Gabriel's father painted it. What a wacky, offbeat kind of guy Daddy was. Yeah, he was wacky, all right. So let's uh talk to Grace. Got a minute, Grace? And now, What's up? now is here where we get in the part of the game's bread and butter is the questioning uh, thing. So let's talk about voodoo. What can you tell me about voodoo? Well, you know, I didn't know much of anything about it until you started researching it for your book. Now I know that it's active in the city. There's that shop and museum. It can clearly be dangerous in the wrong hands. You should be careful investigating it. Will do. Let's talk about voodoo What murders. do you know about the voodoo murders? Just what I read in the paper, same as you. Right, what do you know about New Orleans? What can you tell me about New Orleans? Well, I've only been here two months, but I love it. It's so much more alive than any place I've been. It feels like anything is possible here. Yeah, what else do you know about New Orleans? What else can you tell me about New Orleans? So you can pretty much talk You're the with... native. Don't ask me. Well, I don't know. Wait, let me tell get... me about yourself, Grace. Yeah, right, Knight. I mean it. What do you want to know? All right, so now we open up a subsection of certain things. How come we haven't gone out yet? <laughs> I'm still waiting around for that lobotomy. As soon as I get it, I'll let you know. How do you like working at St. George's Books? Yeah. Well, it's not exactly a huge intellectual challenge. Yeah, I got... Although the math in your record books could confuse Einstein. Still, I love old books, and it's a nice way to pay the bills while I explore the city for a summer. If you ever pay me, that is. Yeah, you must come from a wealthy family. What do you do after work? Well, I either go to my oil painting class or my Tai Chi. You know that. You know, you can go overboard with this improving yourself stuff. You don't want to alienate us mere mortals. I suppose I should just allow my mind and body to atrophy. Works for me. How old are you? Old enough to know about men like you. Ooh, good line. Anyways, at this point you could just say, just tell me anything at all, and you'll come up with just more. Just tell me anything at all. We'll come up with stuff. I just got my master's in history and classics. My folks wanted me to go on right away for my PhD, but 18 years of school was enough. I needed a break. Yeah, I know, man. I can imagine. Just tell me anything at all. I came to New Orleans because I'd read so much about it, and I thought, you know, spending a few months here would clear my head. What about, uh... Just tell me anything at all. I've always wanted to do something really adventurous, you know? Something real life. I'm sick of libraries and lecture halls. Uh, same here. Nothing, I guess. Never mind. All right, so let's keep... Sit yourself. Let's keep asking her about messages. Do you have messages for me? Dana called. And, uh, Susie left a message about a lawsuit. Oh, lawsuit. Awesome. Okie dokie. There's more when you want them. Yeah, damn right. I'll take more messages. You have more messages for me? Your grandmother called. I keep meaning to get over there. What did she say? Did she sound good? She sounded great, and we had a nice little chat about you. Grace. Don't worry. I didn't go into detail about your cardinal sins. Not that anything about you could surprise her. She adores you anyway. She's my girl. But she said to remind you to stop by and go through your father's things. Hmm. Okay. 
So yeah, there we go. We get more. You have more messages for me. Get more stuff. Here's a strange one. You got a call from someone named Wolfgang Ritter. He said he was calling from Germany. He told me it was urgent. Maybe you should give him a call. Call Germany, like hell. If it's really important, he'll call back. Well, fine. Let's just hope he's not with the German lottery for pitiful American authors. <laughs> you have more messages for me. Your friend Detective Mosley called. Talking of visiting. Especially with you. What do you want? He left an interesting message. He told me to tell you that his mother's maiden name is Humphrey. Oh, that's H U M P H R E Y. Fascinating. And that he left some photos for you at the station, at the front desk. Oh, that's good. It's about time. Gabriel, those photos wouldn't have anything to do with the voodoo murders, would they? Now, why would you say something like that? Because I know you. You're getting privileged information, aren't you? Did you tell him you'd put him in your new voodoo book? A writer has a certain obligation to his readers, you know. Gabriel, you know you'll never put him in your book. Your main character is a female orthodontist. You're going to be reincarnated as a pit bull if you keep screwing with your karma. Yeah, karma as long bitch. as it's a male pit bull with a really big... That's enough. Thanks. Anyway, that's all the messages. Thank God. So that's pretty much it, and you can have a request. Could research. you do some research for me? But honestly, sure. we don't what? have we don't have any. I can't think of anything. I can't think of anything. Okay. So yeah, you, you can actually have Grace do some research, but we don't have anything at the moment. All right, there's a flashlight somewhere. Let's see over here. Let's take it. Gabriel's not. Let's take some flashlight. I might need a flashlight. Damn right, you might need a Gabriel flashlight. Gabriel might as well leave that here. Let's open the bed and take a nap. That doesn't seem to work that way. There is no... Nope. Stop it. Stop it, lady. Gabriel not sleeping on his own. It's no use. I can't sleep. Well, yeah, it's... Uh, I mean, it's the morning. What do you expect, Gabriel? Anyways, uh, yeah, we looked at that. Now we're gonna go look... At some books over here while we're over here. That shelf holds used copies of the Dime Strife series. Secrets of unsolved ancient UFO mysteries and such. They just leap out the door. <laughs> the top shelf contained books on animals including snakes and other reptiles. Let's look at it. Great. Read about snakes and reptiles. Gabriel pulled down a book on snakes. Snakes are legless reptiles. Some snakes kill their prey with poison, some by constriction. A snake smells by tasting the air with its forked tongue. The smells are passed back to a sense organ in the mouth. Constrictor snakes, however, sense their prey by vibration. Hmm. Did you know that many of the legends about dragons and giant worms are actually based on snakes? You know, dragons, devils, sea monsters, well, they've always been associated with snakes. Grace, get alive. Alright, so let's uh, look at this book here, I guess. Gabriel Poole. No, 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 no. Gabriel selects a volume of German poetry that he always found strangely compelling. Yes. Drei Drachen. Drei Drachen kriechen in meinen Schlaf. Die Seele wollen sie lebendig zum Fraß. Feurigen Atems, geschwelltener Zunge, genießen sie jedes Mal. That's nice. Kind of creepy, though. Who's the author? Heinz Ritter. I'm not sure what it says. But I get the feeling the guy was one sick puppy. Over here. Gabriel leaps through a German English dictionary. Let's see, mid tag means midday noon. Yeah, well, there's other words in here. Gabriel leaps. Spiel means game. 
Interesting. Like Glockenspiel. Gabriel leaves. Himmel means heaven. Uh huh. Yeah, so if you go back. Gabriel. And dry means three. Yeah. Gabriel. Possessing means possessed. That's handy to know. Yeah, so you could like read that and figure Gabriel. it out. Drachen means dragons. I wonder if Mosley would know he was being insulted if I called him Drachenbrea. Alright, so we're pretty much done here for the time being. Let's use the door. I'm going out. Uh-huh. Alright, so it's time to hit the road. So we have our map here. As you can see, we can go to the police station, Neopol Neopol Napoleon House, Jackson Square, St. Louis Cathedral, Historical Voodoo Museum, or you can hit the button here to go outside of New Orleans on the French Quarter, and we'll have the Grandma Knight's House. And yeah, I'll get through this part and then I'll be done. But yeah, hey, welcome. I'm so glad you stopped by. This is Granny Knight. Sorry it's been a while, Grandma. Not at all. Give us a kiss. Now come and sit down. Tell me how you're doing. Doing pretty good, Granny. Let's talk to her just right How you been, Gran? Just fine, dear. I'm sorry I bothered you at work, but I was hoping you'd get a chance to go through your father's things in the attic. Don't be silly. You can call me anytime. Alright, so let's talk to her. Can we talk, Gran? Of course, my boy. How can I help? Let's talk. So you always have these kinds. What can you tell me about? Voodoo. Yeah, what do you know about voodoo? voodoo? What an odd question, Gabriel. Of course, you always were interested in monster movies and all that other weird stuff. You get that from your father and granddad. I don't know anything about it, dear. Of course, it was very big in New Orleans at one time. But you don't hear about it so much these days. Too much else in the world to worry about, I guess. Yeah, a lot of stuff. What do you know about the voodoo murders? Especially in 93. Oh. And I don't want to. I sometimes wonder what this world is coming to. What's here about New Orleans? What can you tell me about New Orleans? New Orleans is very southern. Of course, though, not as much as it used to be when I was a girl. It's gotten much more influenced by the East Coast and that California stuff. Still, it hasn't changed as much as other places, I reckon. We've always been happy here. Yeah, well, it's a cool place, I guess. Let's hear more about what it. can you tell me about New Orleans? Let's hear more about My it. My goodness, boy. You've lived here all your life just like me. I can't tell you much that you don't already know. Well, you're older than me. I'm sure you can tell, tell me. Tell me about yourself. Me? Oh, surely you have something more interesting to talk about. Oh, come on, Graham. All right, dear. What do you want to hear? Let's hear all about everything. What do you do all day? Everything. You know how I love to knit and work in my garden? I also take long walks. It's the only way to keep an old body like mine from stiffening up. You're not old. Oh, don't be foolish. I'm older than the hills. You might be, but, you know, you're only as old as you feel. Tell me about the fall you met, Granddaddy. Well, you know I was born Rebecca Wright. My daddy owned a lot of land outside of town. Peas, corn. Pop, all kinds of things. It was a good childhood, but my father was very strict. He didn't much let me out of his sight. Hmm. How'd you meet Granddaddy? Tell me how you met Granddaddy. I met Harrison at a church revival. There was a traveling preacher back then, a big fella named Reverend Jim. I even remember his slogan, Come to me to find your way. Your granddad was sitting right behind me and my girlfriend Alma, and at one point, old Reverend Jim was flinging his hair around with his fryer and brimstone annex, and the piece of it, one of those small add-on dues for ma'am, went flying off. I swear, Harrison and I were the only ones that noticed. We both started laughing to beat the band. Everyone looked at us like we were a couple of loonies. 
It was then I knew that he was for me. Not oh, just that, huh? That's pretty crazy. How you feeling these days? Fit as a fiddle, and don't you worry your head about it. Just tell me anything at all. I had your father when I was 22. The doctors told me I couldn't have any more after him, so I'm afraid I spoiled him rotten. That's a shame. Just tell me anything at all. I never loved any man but your grandfather. And I never will. How nice. Alright, uh... Oh, nothing. Never mind. Let's talk to you about... Alright, dear. Let's talk to you about the night family. Tell me about our family. Who would you like to hear about? Your granddad, your father, or your mother? All of them. Let's hear about, uh, Harrison. Tell me something about granddad. Your granddad immigrated to America when he was 21. He worked his way through school, met and married me, and we had your father, Philip. That's it? Tell me something about granddad. Your granddad supported me and your father with bookkeeping. Hated every minute of it. Didn't really like bookkeeping one bit. Maybe that was why he had the worst luck with jobs. The night he'd come home afraid to tell me he'd lost another. <laughs> and I would tell him it didn't matter to me. But he felt ashamed, Gabriel. Well, he's like the breadwinner, of course. Tell me something about Granddad. Harrison was only 36 when he died. Your father was eight years old at the time. Your granddad was hit by a streetcar in the business district. Damn. Took me nearly a year to believe he was really gone. I'm sorry, Gran. I know you are, dear. Anything else? Tell me something about granddad. Did you know that your granddad was a poet? He was! He wrote the most beautiful poetry for me when we were courting. I always thought he should have done something with that gift. But he was such a practical man. Didn't believe in chasing after dreams. Good for him, I guess. Tell me about my father. Your father was my only child. How we adored him. Philip suffered from terrible nightmares, just like your granddad did. They were two peas in a pod. Now they're dead. Tell me about my father. When Philip met your mother, it was love at first sight. Another one. They were married two weeks later. Never looked at a girl seriously until then. And he looked at plenty. You have your father's way with women, Gabriel. And your granddad's. <laughs> really? Well, that's pretty cool. Tell me about my father. I wanted to just lay down and die when he and your mother were killed in that car crash when you were only eight. It was the thought of taking care of you that kept me going. Mm. The police say your father swerved off the road after being frightened by something. Perhaps a deer in the road or a wild cat. Maybe a, maybe a, a wild cat, huh? Tell me about my father. Your granddad wanted Philip to have a normal life. He was obsessed by that thought. He pushed Philip to go to law school. Philip was driven to art. He painted almost in a daze. He would get so inside himself when he worked. Very interesting. Let's hear about my mother. Tell me about my mother. Your mother was Margaret Templeton when your father met her. She came from a very wealthy Creole family in New Orleans. She was beautiful and reckless. She was madly in love with your father, of course. But I also think she liked defying her family. Since you're so interested in family history these days, why don't you go by St. Louis Cemetery Number 1 and visit the family tomb? It would be a sweet gesture. Maybe I will. Yeah, there we go. So we got some good stuff there. Now let's compliment. You know, you get prettier every time I see you. Have you baked any of your incredible molasses pies lately? Molasses pie? No, dear. But you let me know when you want some, and I'll whip up half a dozen. Molasses pie sounds lovely. You've lost weight. Are you caught in a new man? Oh, Gabriel, don't be silly. He 
You know there'll never be anyone but your granddad for me. Well, that's a shame. Well, maybe not really. But anyways, you can go back and listen to all the tapes if you want. Let's head upstairs. I'm going to go up to the attic, Gran. Be careful of the dust. And be careful of the dark. Alright, so let's look. Let's grab that. I think I'll take Daddy's sketchbook with me. Alright, so let's look at the sketchbook, shall we? We can open the book. And yeah, as you can see, he had some. Images haunt the pages of Philip Knight's sketchbook. The way they must have haunted his mind. Whoops. Images, the images touch a deep card in Gabriel. So familiar are they that he finds it hard to believe they aren't from his own subconscious. Alright, so we're done here. Let's uh, continue. Now let's come over here and, and look at this the clock. clock. Now, if you remember, there was a, that poem, that, or whatever, we gotta use this, and let's see, it's at three o'clock. Gabriel doesn't, Gabriel doesn't, the hand, Gabriel, the hands do not appear to have any mechanical, So we gotta take the dragon, which I think is this thing. Oh, that's an angel. This is the dragon. Let's hit it for three. Oh no, this is three. What the hell? I moved out. Granddaddy, you old fox. So there we go. Why do that? Take the photo. Gabriel doesn't. So what do we have here? We got a picture. The old photograph show Gabriel's grandfather with two other men that Gabriel has not identified. The letter is addressed to Heinz Ritter, whoever that is. Read it. The letter is written in German, but Gabriel determines what he can about it. It was sent from a place for Schloss Ritter in Rittersburg, West Germany. The letter is addressed to mein Sohn Heinz and signed Wilhelm Ritter. One of the reoccurring words strewn throughout the letter is the word Schattenjäger. Schattenjäger. The only thing that Gabriel can decipher about the letter is a sense of urgency in the handwriting and in the heavy use of quill tip bold strokes and underlining. All right, so we're done uh, here. And, uh, yeah, I am actually going to stop the video here, and in the next episode, we will, uh, we will go investigate, we'll go talk to Grandma and find out who Heinz Richter is. I've been Kenshin1913, I'll see you later. Bye-bye.